Hi guys, welcome back to Grains and Small Places. If you're new here, I'm Kara. Welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be reviewing my new Anchorsum mixer. So I'm very excited. I've held myself back to be able to film my first use with you. So I've not got a chance to use it. Of course, I've looked over the machine, plugged it in, tested it, made sure it worked, but I haven't used the machine yet to make anything because I wanted you to see a for real first time user because I've heard that this mixer can have a, like a learning curve to it. So I wanted to go ahead and do that with you guys. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to make is my dinner roll recipe, and I will put a link to the recipe in the description box below. I also have a video on the dinner rolls and the Hawaiian rolls if you're interested. But today I'm going to make those dinner rolls, but I'm going to use a little bit of spelt, a little bit of kamut, and a lot of hard white. So I like to mix my grains. So any of my recipes that call for like all hard white wheat, it's because I'm trying to make the recipe kind of more basic so that people that don't have a whole lot of grains or are just starting out, not used to a lot of different grains or also can only ever get hard red or hard white. Just a little side note, any of my recipes that are made for all hard white wheat can be also made with all hard red wheat. That's a question I get asked a lot especially for my friends that aren't in the United States. They say that it's pretty impossible to get hard white wheat and all they have is hard red wheat. So you can rest assured that you can go ahead and use your hard red wheat in any of my recipes that call for hard white wheat. <laughs> Sorry if that's confusing. And then if you want to throw in a little bit of the other grains because you like the flavor or the texture or something about it or say you got a whole bunch of grains and you don't really like it, <laughs> I've used some of those grains in these recipes and I'm happy to just put a little bit in each one to use those grains up that way we're not wasting and then I know okay I probably won't buy that grain again next time and I'll stick with the ones that I like or maybe try something different that we haven't tried before. I will make sure to put down in the description box below a link to um, different grains, a link to where you can grab one of these. It is an investment so it is something that you know, in the old times, the grandmothers, great grandmothers would have an old KitchenAid and that would get passed down to their family. So I'm hoping this becomes a family heirloom and we can pass it down through generation to generation. So I'm looking at this more of an investment and something that could be passed down to my children. Okay, so to get right down to it, I did want to go over just a couple things. So when I was researching the Anchorson Mixer, I did see that they come with a seven year warranty for the base. All the other things are a one year warranty and some of these are wear parts that you may need to replace in the future. So when you're purchasing this investment, you want to make sure that you purchase it from a company that is approved to sell the Anchorson Mixers from Anchorsum themselves. So if you go to their website, it'll tell you the dealers that are allowed to sell this, then you'll still get to keep your warranty. So you can purchase this on Amazon, but not every seller on Amazon is approved by Anchorsum. So you do have to check who you're purchasing it from on Amazon and make sure they are approved dealer. Bread Beckers is an approved dealer as of now they can sell these and you can still get your warranty as well as Pleasant Hill Grains is another one. I know there's other ones out there but I wanted to highlight those because if you want one in person I believe Breadbeckers has them in person if you're anywhere near northern Georgia. If you want to purchase online and have it shipped to you I was very happy with my purchase from Pleasant Hill Grains. One thing I liked about it is they were super quick at shipping I've heard that their customer service is fantastic. Um, I chatted with them about an affiliate link and they got right back to me and everything was processed very quickly. And so far I've been really happy with them. So that's a nice thing to note. They are an approved seller, their shipping was quick, and they also have on their website grains. They also have replacement parts and all of the attachments that you can get for this. So I thought it was great. It could be kind of a one-stop shop place. So I'll put a link to that in the description box below. Yes, it's my affiliate link and I get a few extra dollars if you purchase from it, which helps my, keep my channel going. 
um, and it doesn't cost anything extra to you. They also had a wide variety of assorted colors. So I went to some of the dealers that was on Angerson's website and some of them only had three or four colors. Some of them only had, you know, just a couple and they had one of the widest varieties of colors to choose from. I chose, as you can see here, I've got the olive green. It is a matte finish, so it's not shiny and I really love it. When I pulled it out of the box, if you saw my unboxing video, I did that live with you guys. So if you wanna watch that and haven't seen it yet, it comes with, I go over all the pieces that came in the box, everything. It was kind of exciting and fun to chat with you guys in the comments. That is in, if you go to my channel and look at the lives, that's my only live right there right now, but hopefully there'll be others in the future. But when I unboxed it, it was even prettier <laughs> in person than it was online. So I was really excited about that as well. And then after that first night, I couldn't put it away. I just left it on my counter and just kept staring at it. It was kind of, it's a, it's a nice smooth finish. It's kind of fun to touch. It's nice to look at. I don't know, it's just really enjoyable. It lit up my world like a kid on Christmas and I was just ecstatic to have this. So <laughs> I hope it lives up to its name when we start using it together. Speaking of putting it away, I was also worried when I ordered this that I would have nowhere to keep it. Obviously you can see I have a small space. My cabinets are limited. I only have a little area that I can set aside for certain things. So. I will show you here in a little bit where I put it and how it fit. We'll get to that. So the recipe we're doing today, I'm doing a double batch of my dinner rolls. And with that recipe, I should be able to get a tray of dinner rolls, give me 12 dinner rolls, and two of my small bread loaves. So just to touch base on my bread loaves, I have this small countertop oven here and these fit perfectly inside. These are the small four by eight bread loaves most of my recipes are written to fit this size. I'll put a link to them in the description box below. They are fairly cheap. But if you have the larger, I think they're nine by five or even the eight and a half by four and a half, I think it is. Those I've had a lot of people messaging me telling me that they've had great success with my bread loaves. If you don't like the smaller loaves, that sometimes they'll take my recipe times it by one and a half and then they'll get two nice big loaves that will come over the pan on the bigger bread pans. So, I mean, it, it's just all in preference of what you prefer. You can still use these this recipe with the smaller bread pans. Just note, your bread will not stick up as high on the pan as you might be expecting. But I think this makes for a perfect size little homemade bread loaves. I'm able to make sandwiches out of them, French toast out of them, toast out of them. It's perfect for our family. We've been doing it for years and this is the size that I have <laughs> available to me. So I just wanted to go over that with you real quick. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. I'm not going to go over all of the recipe ingredients because I've already done a video on these rolls and I have a, re a written recipe for you. So we're just going to go ahead and see how it needs. Um, look how it handles the dough. Today I'm going to be using the, let's see if I can get this out, the roller. Um, many people have left me comments down below that this roller is all they use when they're kneading their dough and that they don't use the big kneading paddle. So I'm going to try it with that first and then see how it goes. And this also has a little scraper here. I do like that all of these pieces are like pretty seamless and easy like this, just this pin lifts up lifts up and it goes back down. I don't know if you can see that or not, but that's all that you have to do to put this little roller ball in. It's not difficult. And then the roller ball has a little rubber thing that kind of guides on the bowl. So we'll see how it goes. I've heard sometimes if you want to lock this, you can lock it and then it won't touch the edge of the bowl. But when I read the manual, it said to start with my dough in here with it not locked. So leaving it on the edge of the bowl and start kneading and as it comes together, then I may or may not need to lock it away depending on the size of my dough ball and how much I'm making at a time because this, as you can see, is fairly large. It handles a nice batch of dough. Okay, so let's get started on the bread. Okay guys, here we go. <laughs> I'm kind of excited. All right, 
So I went ahead and I already milled the flour and I've got my warmed water here. Again, this is a double batch of my dinner rolls. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in the warm water. We're gonna put in the salt. And I'm going to put this the same as I do my other times. So I'm gonna put this in front of my mixer here to remind me to put the yeast in later. Cause I'm gonna go ahead and make this the same method I generally do where I let everything mix together except for the yeast. And then we'll cover it and let the fresh milk flour start absorbing the liquid for about 15 minutes. Then we'll come back, we'll put the yeast in and we'll start kneading it. So that's kind of my method that I teach how I get the best results for bread. I'm going to do my brown sugar. And these are a sweet yeast roll. So of course it's going to have sugar. You could use the sucanat if you wanted. You could use honey. You could use whatever sweetener you wish. But I do think that to make them the sweet rolls, they do need some kind of sweetener. All right, and I pulled this butter out earlier today. We're going to go ahead and stick that in. It's nice and soft. Room temperature, we don't want to put cold butter in here. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and put the eggs in here as well. And I like to use room temperature eggs, that way I don't cool down my dough any. Okay, I'm gonna wash my hands real quick. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on and I'm just gonna turn it on low first. And we turn it to on. people mentioning is that there are times that if your dough's not mixing and you can just pull this over which is super wonderful because that's gonna help shorten down the time to have to stop it and scrape down the side but, but two things I want to know for sure that I'm noticing right away is number one this thing is so quiet the other mixers that I had I always had to turn my, down my volume way down for the mixing and I'm also noticing, and the other thing that I'm really loving is the view that I'm seeing. You guys are able to see my whole bowl while mixing. So I, I'm loving that. So as I adjust this speed, I can go faster and slower. I'm not sure how fast this will accept without spilling all over. Let's see. if you can tell how fast that went but that was super fast okay so this is good enough for me I, even if not everything's all mixed up yet I haven't put the flour in and again the yeast is not in here so I'm gonna go ahead and grab my flour and I'm not sure if you can see but I kind of love when I mill my flour and I'll move my bowl around as I'm going but like my hard white is this light color here and then you can almost see the difference here a little bit where like a little bit of the spelt went and then a little bit of the Camus. I don't know. I just think that's kind of cool. Usually I just mill them all together at once, but I just like to do that occasionally. Let's go ahead and put, I'm going to just put the whole amount of flour in and this might be a big no, no to some of you, <laughs> but this is how I do it when I use my Bosch compact mixer. So, I think it's only fair to give it the same treatment. Okay, so I went ahead and put it all in there. Now, if you're making this recipe, you may want to put in not all of it at once because you may need a little more or you may need a little less. 
every recipe is a little bit different for every person. So if something doesn't turn out, it's not always the recipe. It could be the technique. It could be that you needed a little more or a little less of flour. There's no way to write one recipe that works for absolutely everybody. We've got humidity, the moisture within the berries themselves, even different batches from the same farmer can be different from season to season, even from cut to cut. So I just wanna make note of that also. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead again, turn it on and then start out at the slow speed. And just let this go and see I'm just on the, ver the, the lowest speed that it has right now. So I read that if it gets stuck sometimes, you can pull this over. Um, also, once it forms into a dough ball, it said if it starts coming out of the bowl like it just started to, that I may want to lock this over. So I think I'm going to go ahead and lock this over a little bit and see if that gives me better results. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this up to two, or between one and two. This mixer does not have like a one, two, three, four, five, six. It has an adjustable dial, so it's kind of like when you're hitting the gas in your car, <laughs> you go a little bit, and the more you hit it, the faster it goes. So this is a little bit different in that sense. But wow, look at that. Okay, so this scraper for me is doing a really nice job. I hear that there's some people that say that some dough can get on the other side of the scraper, but I've also read that that's fairly normal because the purpose of the way that this mixer works <laughs> is that it's supposed to be the closest to hand kneading. So as the, the roller ball has little crevices, as it goes around, it's almost like your hands or your palms kneading and this is like your table kneading against it. So this isn't necessarily to scrape the sides per se, but it is to make sure that the dough is being pushed against this roller. And this roller does not have a spinning mechanism. The only thing that spins this roller is as it rides the edge of the bowl or rides the dough. So it kind of is just that centrifugal force that keeps this moving. And I kind of love that because it's less points to break, I guess. <laughs> is the best way to describe it. So I'm getting a lot of dough up on the top of my roller here because I let it go. So that was probably me letting it go high because I did read that it said if it starts to creep up the bowl, then I need to mount this further away from the wall because it said if you're doing bigger batches that you may need to mount it away from the bowl, the wall. So I'm just gonna pull it off of that. I'm gonna scrape it down off the scraper because I wanna make sure that I have all the dry flour incorporated there was a tiny bit back there so as you can see here that was on top of the scraper there's still some dry dough there so or dry flour rather all right another great thing to note about this mixer is that most of the parts on here are dishwasher safe so the roller ball and the scraper even the bowl and pretty much most of these things are dishwasher safe which i found to not be true for some of the other mixers. So if that's important to you, that's another thing to know. Okay, I'm gonna I'll mix in the rest of this dry flour. point I'm just playing with it you can see because I want to see where I get the best results I'm not wanting to knead my dough just yet but I'm loving the variable I'm loving the variable movements that I can make with this that's pretty amazing so this does come with a lid let's see if I can grab it which goes on it like this. And a friend of mine let me know if you have a large batch of dough that you're wanting to rise in here with this lid on, that this rim here, you can actually put the lid on this way. That way, when your dough's rising, your lid doesn't you know, come off or get stuck all over here. So I thought that was a nice tip. Thanks, Tracy. But to let this rise, I think I'm gonna go ahead and use plastic wrap for now. 
One, that way I can see what it's doing. And two, I don't want to take any of these mechanisms off right now. It may be something that I do in the future and use that lid, but I'm just gonna go ahead and use plastic wrap for now. That way we can keep an eye on it. I don't know about you, but saran wrap tends to hate me. <laughs> I always have problems not letting it get bunched up. I don't know. Is that just me? I don't know. Let me know down in the comments below if you have problems with saran wrap at all. Matt has zero problems with saran wrap. He is able to just take the piece of plastic right off and have zero issues with it. It's completely straight, no problems whatsoever. Okay. So possibly I may be just using the lid in the future because my saran wrap barely covers all of this. We'll see. I'm sure I'll develop some habits that I like and don't like, so. Okay, we're gonna come back in 15 minutes and then we will put our yeast in here. So Alexa, set a timer for 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Okay, so I wanted to show you one fantastic thing about my new mixer. One of the things that I really love about it is that it fits in the space that I already had prior. So I did have to move some uh, extra mason jars and things like that over, but that's not that big of a deal. I was able to find another place to put those, but let me show you real quick my cabinet where I keep it. So this is where we have the oven sitting. And right underneath, this is where my Bosch Compact used to sit. So you can see my anchor shim fits in my tiny little cabinet just perfectly. It has to go to the side. We have room for our plug and we have room for the other mixer and what I love about this is if you have a taller cabinet than I do you can actually nest this inside of here and it all will store in just this little area but because I have this little space here I'm not able to easily get it in and out of the cabinet but luckily we have this spot over here available and then in the kneading paddle and I hear I may or may not use that often and then those are my little disposable piping bags but another awesome thing is just underneath of this is my Bosch Compact. So this used to live up here and we used to have mason jars and extra cups down here, but that isn't necessary anymore. And I was able to find other places, like I said, and then my blender attachment, the second bowl for my Bosch Compact, it all fits in here. So I just wanted to show you guys that really quick because I thought that was amazing because I had a hard time fitting that Nutramil Artiste in that area with all of the pieces that it came with. It just seemed like there was just so many little parts and pieces. So I just wanted to share that with you real quick. Okay, it's been 15 minutes. So let's go ahead and take this off. I've got my little measuring spoon here to remind me to put my yeast in. So I like to use instant yeast. If you are using active dry yeast, then you are going to want to do this just a little bit differently. I don't want to mess up my counting here. <laughs> if you're using active dry yeast, rather than putting the yeast in and everything right now, so what you're going to do differently is take your active dry yeast and at the time where we said, let's wait 15 minutes, the last step, you're going to take your active dry yeast and put it in a small bowl. Make sure you reserve some of your liquid from the beginning of the recipe along with a tiny bit of the sugar. And then you're gonna put that in the bowl with your active dry yeast during the 15 minute rest period. After the 15 minute rest period, we're going to come over here and then I put my instant yeast right in here. You're going to take your active dry yeast, which should now be nice and foamy. If it's not, that means that you have a problem with your yeast. But if it's nice and foamy, then you're going to pour it in here and then we'll, everything else after that will be the same, except for your rise time may be a bit longer. I found on a warm day, my rise time for the first rise is usually right around an hour unless it's really cold out. And my second rise time is usually about 40 minutes or so. That varies for everybody as well. So let's get this yeast mixed in. Turn it on. And then turn it to maybe two. And I'm going to unscrew this and let it ride on the edge and see if that makes a difference. So I'm having it ride up again. So because that's happening, let me turn it off. So because this keeps riding up, I think I am gonna go ahead and keep it latched in because I kind of liked 
what it was doing there. So I'm just going to, whoops, that's untighten. <laughs> just going to tighten this here so that this will stop my paddle from going any more that way, which seems to make my dough want to rise up. This is a double batch, um, but it won't stop my paddle from coming in. So as you can see, I can still come in with my paddle here. So that I love that about this little attachment or adjustment rather. Okay, back to mixing. So I'm sure that you're noticing what's going on here. And this is telling me that it's all mixed in. I don't see any more dried yeast. So I'm gonna go ahead and start the kneading process. I don't know how long the kneading process is going to take for this mixer. My old mixer took anywhere, usually between 20 to 25 minutes. My old KitchenAid mixer usually took me somewhere between 25 and 30 minutes. Same with hand kneading. And that is a love language all on its own. And then my, uh, the um, Nutramel Artiste took about 10 to 13 minutes or so when I use that. So we'll find out how long this goes for. So I will get kneading and let you know how long that took. So after a few minutes, it's only probably been two minutes of kneading, and you can see the dough is still very shaggy. Obviously one or two minutes is too fast. It's never gonna come together even with white flour. But I wanted to show you, I went ahead and unbolted this because I'm liking what I'm seeing here. So I'm learning at the same time that you're learning. I just want to learn how to use the mixer and how it works with my dough and how I like it better. So I just wanted to show you that, that I went ahead and let this kind of work all on its own for a little while. And one more thing, the mixer comes with a little timer dial so you can just use the timer on the dial itself. Obviously make sure you don't want to stick your hands in here. That could be very dangerous, but um, you probably can't tell how high up I am, but I'm pretty high up from here. So don't worry, I'm not sticking my fingers down in there. But the timer is another really nice feature um, if you want to use that. Okay, so I'm noticing a change in my bread right now. Alexa, how much time? You have three minutes and 30 seconds left on your red timer. Okay, so it has been about 16 minutes. My bread is looking much smoother. I want to make note, if you're using this particular mixer, if the bread starts to rise up on your dough panel and want to like come out of the bowl or come over to the top of this, I've noticed that you want, that means you want to pin this in more. If you have it pinned in too far, then what happens is it just kind of sticks to the center thing and just goes around like this. There's no kneading action. So you want to make sure that you adjust this as you go. Occasionally, just come over, peek inside. I love the fact that you can adjust this on the fly. So I don't have to turn anything off. I don't have to change anything, take anything out, do anything. I could just literally pull it to the side a little bit this way, tighten it, pull it more if it needs to, tighten it, go this way, loosen it. I just love that. I also love I can change the speed on the fly faster or slower. So let's go ahead and take a look at our bread dough. You can see how nice and stretchy this is. Oh yeah. I guess I should have showed you on this side. It's easier. Nice and stretchy. And we have our nice window pane. So that is amazing. I really enjoyed watching this do the mixing and there did some dough get on both sides of my little dough knife here or scraper, whatever you want to call it. I think they call it a dough knife. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and take this out. Thank goodness for this little tool here. So I'm just going to scrape off my dough. I think technically this scraper is actually made for the little roller ball here. Okay, so I'm gonna pull this up, which releases my roller ball here, and pull this out of my dough, which pulled out pretty clean. 
other than this little bit I got up here, but I wanted to show you, well, first of all, you can see that stretch, nice gluten formation. That's what we want to get our nice stretchy dough. So I wanted to show you, this does have like the perfect size groove cut out of it so that you can actually stick it down in here if you have like cookie dough or some kind of batter that's hard, you can clean this entire thing out. So I think that was kind of genius move on their part having this in there. But also this has the right curve on this side for scraping your dough out of the bowl. So I don't know if you could see that or not, but the, the curve here is perfect for that. For when we go to shape it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is loosen this. If this is hard for you to turn, I've noticed if you pull this forward a little bit, take the pressure off, it loosens very easily. But if you have a lot of tension on it, it is hard to turn. That's something I'm learning. Also, again, this is my first time using it. So I'm gonna loosen that all the way to let that spin over. And then I can just pull our bread dough out. And again, I was showing you is this lid can either go on this way or it can go on this way. So since this is a double batch, I think I'm gonna go ahead and put the lid on this way. And there is a little bit of a um, raised area here so that it doesn't pop off. Obviously, aesthetically, it looks better this way. But because I did a double batch, I'm just gonna see, I'm not sure where we're gonna come in the bowl. Honestly, it probably would be fine to have it flipped in with a double batch, but if I'm doing even bigger, then I'm gonna to wanna to flip it. But we're gonna go with this now. I'm gonna let this sit for an hour and then I will bring you back and let you guys see how it looks. We had a super productive day yesterday. We made a triple batch of our flour tortillas and a batch of pasta, which gave us enough for probably three dinners worth with just one of the, uh, my pasta recipes. And then we also made a double batch of the cheese crackers because these have been super popular in my house these days. So <laughs> I actually shared some with my parents as well. If you want any of these recipes, I can put a link to the recipes in the description box below. Some of them have videos and some of them don't. And I like to keep these just sit on my counter covered and they're still nice and crispy the next day. And the tortillas and the pasta, I like to make them fresh. I don't dry my pasta. We put them in the little nests and we flash freeze those and then put them in the bags after they're frozen and then I keep them in the freezer. Anytime we want pasta, fresh homemade pasta with fresh milk flour is always ready to go. And then the tortillas, I like to take those and I will put the tortilla and then like parchment paper, tortilla parchment paper and put those in and freeze those. And my son just told me, mom, you're gonna have to make these all the time because I wanna eat these every day. <laughs> he likes to make little pizzas with them or wraps or quesadillas, tacos, you name it, he likes to make with those tortillas. So again, I will make sure to put those links to the re recipes down in the description box below. That way you can check those out as well. Guys, this mixer is so fun to use. Everything nests together except for the kneading paddle, which from what I understand, a lot of people put this in the back of the cabinet, never need it again because they just use the roller ball. I wanted to show you that all of this nests together. So you, this all comes with when you buy your Anchor Swim mixer, all these pieces come together. You don't have to buy any um, extras or attachments or anything like that for your first purchase. Everything that you need right away comes together. So the lid I showed you earlier, it goes on here, it sits on here like this, and it also sits on our plastic lid. And then all of the attachments that come with the mixer, so like my roller ball and the scraper, the dough, dough knife, the mixing whisks, the cake pals, everything fits in here, which fits right in here. So it's great for storage. So one other thing I wanted to show you, the plug is removable, so that can be stored in a separate area. It probably would fit nested in there also. I actually didn't try that. But I wanted to show you how fast this thing goes. So I showed you from the top view, but I'm not sure if you were able to see it very well. So let me see if you can see that. Okay, so we're, I'll just leave that to the side. 
All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and just turn it on. So it has an on and off switch and it also has a timer that goes all the way to 12 minutes. So you can use this timer. I haven't adjusted myself to using the timer yet. I still use my Alexa machine, but <laughs> that's just out of habit. So when you turn it on, it has a little click and then this is the lowest speed and then this is your, the other dial over here is your speed dial. So that is going to be how we increase our speed. So what I read was generally about two to three-ish is where you're going to need your dose, but it goes Wow, that's a lot of power. So I wanted to just show you how fast it could go. So if you're wanting to make a nice stiff peak meringue or whipped cream or anything like that, you can see how fast that goes. Now, generally you're gonna do those probably in your plastic bowl, but I haven't tried it yet with the metal bowl. I've heard that it is a possibility to do it in that. So of course I'm gonna have to try it in the future sometime. One other feature, take this bowl out. And the bottom of this bowl, just it's as simple as just a, a little line groove in the bottom that fits right into this drive. So the other thing I wanted to show you is this is pretty durable, but if you were to lay this on the side and this has this little support leg, there's a little rubber possibly, and I don't know what material this is, but a soft thing to sit on your counter so that your mixer can sit like this. And then here you have another drive to use a lot of the accessories. So there's all kinds of accessories for this mixer. I don't have any of them yet, but in the future, maybe that's something we'll do. So I just wanted to show you that. This is actually smaller than I thought it was going to be. So it's, it's really, it's definitely shorter than a KitchenAid. Um, and the footprint of it is pretty similar to the Bosch Nutramil Artiste footprint, give or take. But this part here is a little bit taller. But with the bowl on and everything, it's slightly taller. But really, as far as countertop space, which is what my main concern to getting this mixer was, is that it was going to be too big. Um, ended up that it fits just fine in my storage. It fits just fine on my countertop. So I'm super happy about that. And then one more thing. Um, it is, a, obviously, it's a machine. It's, it is an investment machine. So it is heavier than, like, my, say, my Bosch Compact. I think my Bosch Compact was, like, five or six pounds or something. I forget. I said what it was in my review video because I weighed it. This one is just under 30 pounds. So it is hefty, but it pretty much needs to be to be able to handle all that dough, especially dough with fresh milled flour. And look at this, guys. I feel like they thought of everything. So this is what I can use to clean off the little paddle, clean out the bowl. It's such a simple thing, but I'm ecstatic to have it because it keeps my hands cleaner and it makes everything just a breeze to clean up. So I'm super happy to have this little tiny piece of plastic. <laughs> okay, guys, here is the double batch of bread dough that we just made with our new Ankersham mixer. It has risen beautifully. So I think that this would have fit just fine right here, but any more than a double batch, I probably would have had to flip it. So I'm glad that I know now that I can go ahead and keep it here for a double or a single batch. Okay, so you all know that I like to use olive oil on my work surface rather than flour because I don't want to incorporate extra flour into my dough. This one was just about gone. I wanted to use the very end of it. So I'll just add a little more. This is not all for working with the one dough, but I will say that working with the rolls, which I'm going to shape first, can sometimes I need to re-get oil on my hands over and over. So I'm just going to kind of push this to the side like I would if I had a pile of flour and then rub this on the area here. This silicone mat actually does a really nice job of having the bread not stick to it, but I'm going to go ahead and just uh, punch this down and try to just get it out with my hands. If I need that scraper, I do have that as an option, but I'm not sure that that is going to be necessary. So just kind of deflate it a little bit. This is beautiful dough. So the scraper probably would have helped me here, 
but I did end up throwing it in the sink after I had showed it to you. But I mean, the majority of it came out. It's it's pretty good. So if you're the kind that wants every last uh, bit of dough out of there, that scraper is the perfect size to fit down into here. But like I said, I put it in my sink and it's dirty and I don't really want to stop to wash it. Okay, so this is not normally one of my bread dough recipes. This is normally my roll, like I was saying, recipe, but it makes great bread also. So I'm just going to consolidate this all together. Okay, that would be one nice big loaf of bread, wouldn't it? <laughs> All right, so I'm going to divide this into thirds. The best that I can. I don't mind if I have two larger sections and then one smaller section because which just looks like what I did. So because the rolls, I don't mind them being slightly smaller amount of dough. And of course, I could weigh this dough and make sure that it's nice and accurate and everything's about the same. But what's the fun in that, I guess? <laughs> okay, so I've got the two smaller ones. This one's clearly larger, so just going to steal a little bit of that. Okay, that feels good. I'm going to save this one over here to the side for the rolls. So I'm going to go ahead and shape this how I would just my normal bread dough. And then just kind of turn it into a little triangle, push all of the air out of that. And then I'm just going to kind of start rolling that. You want to make sure there's no air pocket here. So you're going to want to roll it. Okay. I'm making sure you can see, roll it and give it a little bit of a tug, roll it and just keep a little bit of tension on that as you're rolling. And again, this is stickier than my normal, just sandwich bread. So we do have to contend with the higher sugar content, but doesn't mean that it doesn't make a beautiful loaf of bread. Okay, so I just kind of tuck those ends in and then I want to make sure that the top here just has a nice smooth and taunt top. So I like the way that looks. I'm just going to put that in my first bread tin. Okay, this is beautifully beautifully smooth bread dough. Dare I say smoother than when I knead it with my Bosch compact, my little one. It would be a hard comparison because I love my little Bosch compact. And don't worry, I'm going to have a video coming out using that again for you guys. All, the, all of you, you would be surprised how many people ask me about the Bosch Compact because it's been a little minute since I've made a video with it. So again, the same thing. Just keep a little bit of tension on that. This is lovely. Tuck the sides under. So I can see a little air bubble under here. I'm just going to pop that. You could leave it. It would make a cute little blister. Perfect for Halloween. <laughs> but the fact that it's trapping air bubbles shows me that we have wonderfully developed gluten because it's stretching around the air bubble rather than popping. So, okay. Put that in my other loaf tin. And I do like to line these with parchment paper just because I have heard things um, along the lines of non-stick coatings not being safe for the family so as much as I can I try to go ahead and line it with parchment paper but I can't always do that I know with my donut pan there's not really any way I can line that one so where I can I do where I can't 
unfortunately there's just some things that we have to bend on okay so this I should be able to get 12 rolls out of so I'm going to cut it into fourths and then each fourth I'm going to cut into thirds Since they're somewhat triangles, it kind of helps me if I go through the point here. <laughs> okay. Look at that nice stretch. So what we're going to do here for the rolls is pull some surface tension. So there's multiple ways to shape some rolls, but basically what I'm doing is pulling all of this dough into the bottom. And I like to, my favorite method is to get some oil on my hand so it doesn't stick and to start here and push it up through the top. Like I'm pushing the dough up through and then just give it a little to smooth that out. And then I'll stick it on our tray. So these rolls, I'm probably going to do my favorite method, which is having them rest in the refrigerator overnight. And that way they will be nice and yeasty, which I like the flavor. It kind of gives it that stronger, not too strong though, that stronger, just more in-depth flavor. It's just delicious. So we're going to go ahead and put these in the fridge for overnight. That way I also don't have to try to contend with baking in my oven because these two I can bake at the same time, but since I'm making a double batch of bread, I'm not able to bake all four loaves all at once because I don't have a regular size oven. Okay. So I'm just going to continue shaping these the same way. Okay, great. So I didn't need as much oil as I thought, which is actually not a bad thing. So I'm going to go ahead and cover these and let them rise for about 30 to 40 minutes, probably about 40 minutes. I'll just take a look at them and then I'm going to cover these and put them straight in the fridge, let them do their little rise overnight, and then I will bake them off tomorrow. So I'll pull them out tomorrow, let them come to room temperature, and then I will bake them in the morning that way we'll have nice bread this evening and fresh rolls tomorrow so you all know that i love making things with my browned butter so today i'm going to be trying the anchor sum using my sourdough chocolate chip cookie dough it's in my blog i'll post a link to the recipe as the greatest sourdough cookie <laughs> because it really is the greatest sourdough discard cookie. You can use discard or, or starter. Either one will work for this recipe. And I've had, I have a recipe where you can make it without the sourdough also, and it's still delicious, but something about that little bit of tang that you can barely taste is just delicious in these cookies. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a batch of those and I'll show you kind of what it looks like with the cookie dough in here in a little bit. So let me get started milling my flour for that. And I love that I can pour my still warmed brown butter right into the anchor sum without having to worry about any melting or plastic or anything since the bowl is metal. So this is a great feature. You can see how it's not getting the sugar in the middle where I'm trying to mix my butter and sugar together. So all I had to do is just pull this in live action while it's working, which is one thing I really love about that. Rather than having to stop the machine, scrape it all down, I can just do this as much as I want to do to make everything all incorporated. Okay, the first time using flour in for my cookie dough. Probably two or three, maybe. And if it looks like it's starting to not mix in there again, I love this feature right here. 
Wow. And this is just one batch of cookie dough. So I know people have said that they can't get one batch to work great, but this is just one batch of my cookie dough and it's still mixing beautifully. Wow guys, it makes beautiful bread dough and beautiful cookie dough. I really think the hype is real. I get it now. So I always thought that that was kind of just fake, but I, I really get the hype because it's really fun to use and I really enjoyed using it and I'm going to enjoy using it for years to come, I'm sure. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today as we used our Angerson mixer for the very first time and my honest review on what I thought about it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like, subscribe. Don't forget to hit that bell down there. That way you'll get notified every time I put out a new video. I put out tons of recipe videos all dedicated specifically to fresh milled flour. So thank you for stopping by Grains and Small Places. Goodbye. Bye.